Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Budget Committee. Uh, tonight is the delegation evening regarding the capital budgets. Uh, and I want to check here. We don't have any regrets from the committee members. And welcome to the other members of council that are here. Do we have any declarations of pecuniary interest? I see none. Uh, tonight, I want to remind members of the public that any member of the public wishing to speak further regarding an issue on the 2016 Budget Committee agenda may appear before Council at its meeting on November 16th, 2015 at 7 p.m. when the recommendations from this meeting will go forward for final consideration. If you wish to speak as a delegation, please sign the sheet located at the back of the room or notify the Clerk's Department no later than noon the day of the Council meeting. Any PowerPoint presentations must also be forwarded to the Clerk's Department no later than noon the day of the meeting. We have no consent items or confidential consent items. We do have a discussion item, which is the public delegations regarding the 2016 capital budget and long-term forecast. Uh, members of staff, are there any other comments that you want to make before we go to that? No? There, Commissioner, you don't have any other comments for us? No. Okay. Just checking. I do have uh, four registered delegations, and then I'll call from the floor if there are any others who wish to speak. Uh, the first is Janet Haslett Thiel from Joshua Creek Residents Association regarding the community enhancement projects. Welcome, and we do have a copy of your materials before us. Members of the committee, if you don't have that, please let us know. Thank you. I apologize for my voice, but I, I do have a wicked cold. So my name is Janet Haslett Thiel. I'm the president of the Joshua Creek Residents Association, but I'm here tonight not just for JCRA, but also for Chartwell Maple Grove Residents Association, the Trafalgar Chartwell Residents Association, and Oakville Lakeside. You may recall in 2012, we came to you with a coalition of 11 residents association to talk to you about the principle of fair distribution of community services. With that, we had a petition of a 1,425 residents, all compelling you to agree that fair distribution of community services is important um, in your decision making. And you listened, and we appreciated that. And you responded positively by putting in the capital plan um, the Southeast Community Recreation Center, as well as the Oakville Arena being rehabilitated so it could become the community hub for their neighborhood. Tonight, we're here uh, to ask you to advance the planning for the Community Recreation Center for Southeast Oakville. Here are some things I'd like you to consider. Southeast Oakville is the only part of town that does not have a Community Recreation Center. The loss of three schools, which is now well over five years ago, has left a large hole in our neighborhoods in terms of places to connect with each other for shared activities. And the current forecast is that we have to wait another five plus years. That seems a very long time when the principle of fair distribution of community services should be upheld. The cost, the redevelopment of the Chisholm school lands, the Brantwood school lands, the hospital lands, and the sale of Lynbrook Public School should provide a net gain conservatively reported by town staff in a parks and rec plan earlier on of between 37.7 million and 51 million. The town's finance staff have advised us that while development charges in the southeast Oakville have been substantial, the rules regarding the allocation of development charges mean that 7 million could be assigned to the southeast community center. We know that infrastructure investments are a town-wide responsibility and the money is pooled, but we are highlighting the loss and redevelopment in our area it can, it can support the advancement of the timing for the building of the Community Recreation Center. In other words, we have and we continue to do our part to support this needed facility. This past summer, the Southeast RAs had two survey opportunities to get resident feedback on the continued support for the Community Recreation Center. In the downtown survey, residents responded that the Community Recreation Center remains a priority for them. Several wrote comments in, when is this coming? Some in language I can't repeat. Um, and there remains a high expectation that this is coming to our neighborhood. In the second survey regarding health services in our area, we explored the suggestion made by the LIN, the Local Health Integrated Network, in 2013, that they would be very interested in having a health hub connected or close to the new community recreation center. Over 1,200 respondents participated in that survey, 
74% supported the importance of a multi-generational community recreation center. TCRA will spend more time tonight on the needs identified in the Southeast community from the health survey. So I'll not belabor the point other than to say that one of the challenges we face is the Lynn now realizes that the need for the health hub is much sooner than the development of the hospital lands to 2021. Earlier timing of the community center, which is what we're asking you for tonight, would be a catalyst to get the Lynn's commitment on paper. So what challenges do we need your help in overcoming? In meeting with Commissioner Closey last year regarding the hospital lands, she updated us on the plans for remediating these lands. And in particular, she communicated that the town cannot begin the remediation until the hospital has moved to its new location and that the extent of the remediation is unknown. We get it. But our ask of you is that the town staff be directed to commence the environmental assessment immediately upon the closure of the old hospital this December. And contingent on the results of that assessment, that the design and planning and implementation of the Southeast Community Recreation Center be approved in preparation for a 2017-18 construction timeline. With your direction, your support, and your approval, we can get this project moving and we may have a partnership with the Lynn. In closing, we applaud the town's earlier commitments to the community recreation centers in Glen Abbey, River Oaks, Iroquois Ridge, QE Park, and 16 Mile Creek. You have probably campaigned there, you've attended meetings there, and activities with your families at these great facilities. You can't help but notice the positive connections people and neighbors are making but pause for a moment with me. Imagine your neighborhoods without one. What would that feel like? Would that be livable Oakville? Is, is, is that the neighborhood you would move into? We're asking you to help us have a community hub. It truly is what makes the fabric, it truly is the fabric that makes Oakville livable how we get together, how we play together, how we get to know one another. So we ask that you vote to advance the Southeast Community Center in the capital plan. It will encourage the Lynn to commit. It is affordable. It will demonstrate a further commitment to fair distribution of community services. And finally, it will be a welcome and well-used community recreation center. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate your material. We do have copies of it, and uh, we will give it some consideration uh, as we go forward, okay? David Mallon, Chair of Trafalgar Chartwell Residents Association. Welcome. We look forward to your information. Uh, thank you, Chair Adams. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Chair and Mayor Burton and Councillors. My name is David Mallon. I represent TCRA, and tonight I'm also speaking on behalf of the Southeast Oakville Resident Associations as well. The purpose of my speaking tonight is somewhat similar to Janet's, but it focuses on a somewhat slightly different issue. But it is to urge your consideration of the earliest possible start to the construction and earliest completion of the Community Recreation Center and Associated Community Health Hub to be located on the OTMH hospital lands. Whilst we recognize the town is not responsible for the establishment of the community health hub, it appears that the local health integration network strongly favors, and I quote from their concept proposal, a facility that is positioned on the site adjacent to or integrated with the proposed community recreation center. Proximity to the existing long-term care facility, Wyndham Manor, would have significant advantages. It is clear the Lynn wants to establish there from their proposal in 2013. This means locating, as a minimum, locating the facility on town land with town services supporting it. It also appears to us from discussion that what the Lynn would really like to do is have a partnership with the town in which the town provides the physical facilities and there is a lease back arrangement from the Lynn to the town to cover the cost of these facilities. 
Therefore, whether the town really wants it or not, it seems to us the town is going to be involved and is presently involved. And from that point of view, we urge the town's early consideration of this issue. <coughs> the Community Recreation Centre, my colleague Janet hasler thiels already discussed this. I won't go further into it other than to say there is very strong support for it in our community and, and, and our community is looking for commitments and looking for dates and anxious to know when the thing's going to get going. Community Health Hub, just to cover this just for a moment. Since the relocation of the hospital to a new site's been clearly established, uh, and I'm told some 15 years ago, uh, I wasn't uh, involved 15 years ago, I can't speak to it personally, but people that were tell me that. Since that time, there has been concern expressed in the community about the resulting lack of medical services in the southeast Oakville area. The hospital has filled a need as the go-to location, not only for medical emergencies, but for all aspects of medical care for Southeast Oakville for many years. One of the findings in the study that was carried out is that many people use it as a uh, first resort uh, drop-in center almost for medical problems of any kind. There are almost no other medical facilities in the area simply because the hospital has served this need. This concern became more acute about three years ago when the hospital relocation started to become a reality with the commencement of planning studies for the use of the hospital lands after 2015. This was the South Central Public Land Study, if you will recall. At that time, TCRA communicated a request to the town for inclusion of a medical clinic on the hospital lands as part of the South Central Public Land Study. Letter dated 7th February 2013. I have a copy if you would like it. This was further supported by a letter to the town from the Mississauga Health and Lynn outlining a concept proposal for a range of medical services in a facility located adjacent to the proposed community centre. That uh, concept proposal is date stamped 13 February 2013. This letter, I might add, was received with both considerable relief and positive response by the southeast community. However, since that time, there has been little to no clear progress made towards the realization of this community health hub, notwithstanding that the hospital is due to close in two months. In 2015, the RAs in Southeast Oakville became aware of the Goodings Ad Hoc Committee, apparently requested by the LEN to determine health needs, particularly of seniors in the area. After some discussion, the Goodings Committee and the Southeast Oakville Resident Associations joined forces to create a survey to determine the views of the community about the hospital closing. By this time, it was clear to the RAs, that's us folks in Southeast Oakville, that the stress of the hospital move, particularly amongst the elderly and mobility challenged, folks that live in the Kane Apartments, for example, had become acute anxiety and we had more than a few very, very upset people. This is the case today. The survey had approximately 1,250 respondents, and the Goodings report addressed to the LIN is publicly released today, only today. The report includes the survey results from 1,204 households and concludes that the survey shows strong support for the early installation of a community health hub. Two. A major concern exists about the time gap between the closing of the hospital and the opening of the community health hub. Apparently at this time it looks like it's five to seven years. The LIN has indicated its timing preference to be 2017, which is two years from now or less. Uh, the Goodings report in passing, I should mention, recommends that the LIN at least consider the utilization of the existing hospital facilities as an interim measure. I'm not sure whether this is going to be acceptable, and I rather sense from talking to Lynn people that they really want a new building with the appropriate design uh, incorporated in it. Difficulties experienced by people in Southeast Oakville when the hospital closes will be transportation to the new hospital, timely access, 
and delays in receiving necessary care. The survey also showed very strong support for the Community Recreation Centre as a top priority. So in conclusion from all of this, we see the need is now. It is not responsive to current needs to defer these needed facilities and services for five to seven years. Just a word about financial considerations. Uh, Janet has already mentioned these. They are essentially contained in Appendix G of the South Central Public Land Study Report. And there is a comment on page 10 of that report which says that the estimates of revenue are conservative. The revenue to the town is likely to exceed the conservative estimates outlined in that report, given that it's almost three years old. As we all know, uh, pricing of residential property in Oakville has increased dramatically in the last three years. Even in the South Central Public Land Study, Appendix G, the excess of revenue over expenses appears sufficient to cover the costs related to the, uh, the community recreation centre. We realise, as Janet has already said, that it's not a direct linkage, that the revenue goes into the pot, and this, this committee and council decide the priorities in the 10-year plan. However, on a simplistic basis, there seems to be money there to do it. Uh, schedule. Um, the key factor in influencing the schedule appears to be the time required for remediation of the OTMH, OTHS sites. No one, of course, at this point knows how much or how little is required. In order to assess the remediation required, a first estimate of the extent is normally done by carrying out what's called a phase one ESA, phase one environmental site assessment. Um, we urge that this work be undertaken as soon as possible in the new year. Um, proposals could be solicited now for a start in January 21, January 1, 2016, uh, as that will be the, when the town has clear possession of the property. The Lynn have discussed their target of 2017 for a functioning facility, and the Coalition of RAs proposed a target of January 2018 for the recreational facility as achievable depending on the extent of remediation necessary. In conclusion, the amply demonstrated need for a community centre is now. The lost relocation of a hospital and three schools weakens the community infrastructure, which urgently needs replenishing in this part of Oakville. We ask that you revise the capital expenditure budget to address these pressing needs with a target for the Community Recreation Centre of 2018 and a Community Health Hub of 2017. Thank you for the opportunity to address you. If I can answer any questions, I'll try and do so. Other questions, members of the committee? Uh, Mayor Burton. Thank you, Mr. Mellon, for uh, taking the time to come and share that information with us. Um, have you, how many conversations have you had with anybody with the Lynn? And anybody with the Lynn? Uh, several conversations recently in the last couple of months, probably no, we haven't. Um, so I, I was, what I had in mind was to, was to have a conversation for a second here about um, the, the nature of the remarks that they give you to try to compare them to the uh, ultimately always indefinite remarks that they give me and, uh, you know, I'm searching to see if they've been more definite with someone else, you know, so that I can go back to them and say, could you please square the circle that, that you're drawing here? Uh, several times over the last several years, it's, it's felt a little bit like they're running us in circles. And I wondered if you had any kind of impression like that. Um, I mean, like me, you're a retired businessman. You understand what yes and no really sound like. And no is always sweet and gentle in the business world. And yes usually comes with a check, right? Um, the discussions uh, were in part informal after the, uh, the television uh, uh, show, which uh, was your show, of course. Um, and uh, um, other comments made uh, have led us to believe they would like, in theory at least, to have an operating facility by 2017. Uh, I'm disappointed that we have not uh, been able to see any clear steps towards that uh, 
uh, desire, or that it's not really a commitment, I don't think. Um, I have also understand, as I think you do, that uh, they're seeking a partner of some kind. I think they'd really like the town to be that partner, to build the facility and then lease it back. So let's, let's chase that for a second. So in those conversations, my answer has always been, please give me a list of the things you need us to build rooms for so that we can get started on the design. Nothing comes. That's, that's the level of disconnect that I'm... So we're, we're always... Uh, we don't ever seem to be proceeding to a real date, if you know what I mean. We're having promising conversations, but I'm, I'm just looking for any sign that there's been <coughs> more uh, commitment uh, out there somewhere. So thank uh, you for that. I would have to say that uh, we share your uh, concern and share your frustration. And what we're asking here is for the town side of it, uh, for the town to support us as far as they are able to. We do have plans, uh, the coalition has plans to meet uh, both with uh, Mr. Flynn, uh, MPP, uh, and with the Lynn Senior Executive as soon as we can arrange this meeting subsequent to the Goodings Committee report being filed with them, which was on the 2nd of Oct October, I believe. So as soon as they agree that they've actually read it and digested it, uh, we're going to be knocking on the door to say, okay, what's the commitment? When do we, how do we make this thing move ahead? Uh, we share your frustration that it does not seem to be moving ahead uh, but there is a strong, strong need in the community for it to move ahead along with the recreation center. Well, let me, let me close with a final question then. Uh, do you have any doubt that the town and I are um, pressing the Lynn as hard as we can to, to get down to particulars and, and to get something moving? Uh, I have no doubt after you've just said that, Mayor, um, and uh, we'd be pleased to work with you in uh, lending our weight to uh, en encouraging the LIN to come to an early decision on this. I look forward to the help. Very good. Councillor Giddings. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mellon and Ms. Hazlitt-Thiel for coming out and your continued advocacy. This question is for Commissioner Closey regarding uh, OTMH and our acquisition of the current property. At one point, uh, there was talk that they may be staying on site for a longer period. Are you able to update us on that? Uh, certainly, is this working? Okay, certainly, and I would uh, offer that uh, Commissioner Lalonde may want to uh, jump in in terms of the timing of the hospital leaving, uh -huh. which is, I think, what you were asking. Yeah. So our understanding they're leaving in December, the mid part of December, about the 15th. Um, so they operate the site until that point in time. They continue the operation of the site until about March, at the end of March, at which time they'll have then moved all of their facilities off the site. So as of the end of March, then the town would have full use of the site. Um, I understand we currently own it now, but there's a lease so, uh, of such back to the hospital. And so that expectation is at least three, at least three months that they'll be there clearing it out or providing vacant possession or whatever, whatever terminology that is? Yeah, I understand it's to the end of March. All right, thanks. That's it? Councilor, you're, you're good? Okay, any others? Thank you very much. Now, you did have some uh, written material there. If you care to provide that to us, uh, we'll share that with everybody so that we've got a, a document of it. Happy to do so. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for I, listening. I appreciate, I appreciate, appreciate you sharing that with us. That's great. Uh, Charlene Pluman, Executive Director, Downtown Oakville Business Improvement Area. Welcome. Thank you, Chair Adams. Uh, thank you for having me here. As he said, I'm Charlene Pluman, the Antonical Business Improvement Area. Um, I believe, if I'm intelligent enough, which is questionable most days. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, so I shouldn't take up too much of your time tonight. Um, speaking mostly to uh, some of the things we mentioned at the October 5th delegation, 
When we're looking at the 2016 to 2026 capital budget, um, in terms of the parking budget, we do acknowledge and appreciate that there is an indication of $50,000 towards wayfinding signage, so that's much appreciated. Um, the budget does indicate that this signage is directed towards the parking lots. We ask that there be consideration towards on-street parking signage and uh, wayfinding signage as well. And we also request the opportunity to work with the town on both the lot signage and the street signage. And the reason we're continuing to push this issue is for things like these pictures. So in the top picture, you'll notice that there is a green P on the left-hand side in a square indicating that you can turn that way to find some parking. What it doesn't indicate is that you can actually turn right as well and find an even bigger parking lot. And they're not on the right side of the road. We're trained to look to our right as we drive on the right-hand side, and it's located on the left where most people are going to be missing that, that signage. It's also in a square. This sounds ridiculous, but we're trained to see a green pea in a circle and understand that means parking. So we think there can be vast improvements made to find the parking. We've heard time and time again that parking is a challenge downtown. Let's do what we can to take away the challenges we can control with proper signage, and let's make sure there's money allocated in the budget for this so that we can do this with, you know, with ease and without delay. In terms of the signage in the parking lots, the middle pictures there are an example. On the left, you see an example of our signage, and I've tried to show these pictures in comparable size to the sign on the right and the left, uh, you know, so that they are true to each other's sizes. So on the left is ours, telling people in very tiny font that they may wish to remember their license plate before they get to the meter. I don't know anyone who notices these signs. They get to the meter and then go back to their car to get their plate. The sign on the right is a sign in Toronto that actually is for very similar meters to ours. This is bright and crisp and clear. You can see it. In fact, the pictures allow you to understand what it's telling you to do, even if English is not your first language. So I use this as an example of why we'd love to work with the town. I know the town has great ideas, and I very much trust the staff. They're very good at what they do. We would love to work with them on improving some of these signs. And down below, again, just an example Ours are in squares, this in a circle. Another example of easier wayfinding, let's tell people how close the parking lots are. When they're on Lakeshore and they're being told there's a parking lot just to their right, let's tell them it's two meters away. We're not telling you to go to Timbuktu. There's quick, easy parking right behind the shop you're trying to go to. We also acknowledge and appreciate that there's $15,000 allocated in the budget to maintain the meters in good working condition. And we thank you for that and we appreciate the staff including that. We do request that some greater funds be allocated for these purposes. We think the 15000 is likely good to just keep those working. But those that we have need improved functionality. We continue to have lineups in the parking lot. We're routinely needing to assist people with both types of machines, the on-street and in the parking lot, and the instructions are unclear for people of all ages. We'd also like improved operations of the current machines. We're still regularly finding that they do not accept coins in all types of weather, all different types of coins. One person can put a toonie in and it accepts it. The next person puts a toonie in and it doesn't. We just can't have this frustration happening to our customers that are giving their time to come and support our downtown businesses. So this speaks to needing to simplify. Two different pictures there of lineups. Uh, one is the lineup generated just from people waiting to use the machine. The other one is one that we experienced, we were able to watch. So the one woman uh, who is sort of, has her back turned and is walking away, gave up. She didn't pay. Um, my only assumption is she either walked and chose to maybe risk getting a ticket or that she got in her car and left the downtown. Uh, the other ones actually got in a bit of an argument amongst themselves about waiting in line and what was happening at the machine and why it was taking so long, and then a discussion of how to use it. And we know this because we had our window open and were able to observe this. This happens day in, day out uh, at this parking lot. We had a, a report in from a customer who wrote to us and stated that this was their experience. The machine wouldn't accept their coins, so they went back to the car to get their, their credit card. They got back, there was now a lineup. So they waited in line, they were able to then put their credit card in and pay by credit card. While they were paying, they misunderstood the instructions, so they entered the time in wrong. They had to start over and go through the whole process again. Um, this took them a total of 10 minutes to pay for parking to make a 10 minute stop. Um, this was actually someone who didn't realize the Kerr Street BIA and the downtown BIA were separate. So it was a Kerr Street parking lot that they were using. So it's not just ours and we're not just pleading to fix this for ourselves, but also for Kerr Village uh, as well. Luckily this customer did admit she did spend some money in one of the stores in Kerr Street, so we appreciated that. Within the budget, it indicates the Lakeshore Road reconstruction happening in 2019 and 2020. Um, 
Chair Adams may have clarified this for me, but we have some questions about whether our voice will be heard on November 2nd in terms of our pre preference for timing if it's already allocated in the budget, but there was an indication just given that there will be further consideration of the budget. So we can ignore point one. Thank you for that clarification. Point number two, we do request the funding that's set aside in 2019 and 2020 of 8.4 million. We can only assume that includes streetscaping, new garbage cans, benches, furniture, and the like. We ask that the budget allocated towards those items be moved to 2016 and 17 so we can have those pieces implemented as soon as possible. Um, we can help to compete with other areas that have spent millions. You look at Sherway Mall that put $550 million into upgrading their facilities. We need to at least keep up on a small basis to make ourselves showing that we're rejuvenating our area. It does help to support increased placemaking when there's different garbages, when there's new places to sit and gather. You have a greater sense of place, a greater sense that you're somewhere different than you know, where you were down the street. The budget is already allocated. We're just asking that the minor amount for these types of things get shifted to be able to be spent a little bit earlier than 2019. And the lifespan of units such as garbage cans is typically 10 plus years. So purchasing them in 2016 or 17 instead of 2019, we will still have the vast majority of their lifespan after the construction is done. So there isn't any concern of needing to buy twice. Let's just buy now what we're planning to buy in 2019. And that's all. So thank you very much for having me here this evening. Do you have some questions? Councillor Dudek? Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. A um, couple of uh, questions that I noted or that became evident. You had said something about $550 million that was spent at Sherway. Yes. Is any of that supplement or supplemented by Peel or City of Toronto or like in other words what we're dealing with here is tax dollars and they are a private mall to the best of my collection. So it's really not comparable in terms of paying for something that the taxpayers are gonna have to pay for. I, I appreciate that, you're correct. It's private funding that they're using, but they're making themselves an attractive area to draw away people that are you know, hopefully otherwise gonna help keep Oakville a vibrant place to live by having a vibrant downtown. So in order to ensure that we can still have appropriate foot traffic supporting our downtown, I think we need to be able to show that we're just as nice or better as some of these other areas that do have deeper pockets for sure than the town can provide with municipal tax dollars. Others? Okay, um, just, I just wanna clarify, you're intending to come on November 2nd at the PND correct. meeting to give us some uh, your advice on the, the issue of the downtown streetscape, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, before you go, you had a couple of questions about wayfinding and your ability to take part in the discussions. I wonder if our staff would be able to uh, suggest uh, how you might best be able to take part in that. Uh, in terms of the wayfinding, uh, the $50,000 uh, in the budget is to look at the wayfinding around predominantly the parking lot areas. Uh, there is some money in the budget for the lakeshore reconstruction that would include um, a new signage as part of the whole streetscape package. So in terms of lakeshore itself, it is addressed through that funding of the $8.5 million. Uh, we also are undertaking a uh, wayfinding study uh, in 2016 to look at refreshing um, the signage or tr strategies that, that we should be using to simplify the signage within downtown. And of course, we have no um, price on that yet, uh, but there is the parking reserve fund that we could look at in 2017 in order to fund any additional wayfinding. And there are uh, questions there regarding the improvements to the machine design and function um, at the parking lots. Uh, do we have any comments on that? I know this is an item that we've been discussing now on and off for going on a year, I think, or so. No, I just have very, I don't have any nails to turn the little knob over. Um, yes, through you, the, um, uh, the, uh, what was the, I lost my train of thought. Uh, the machines, yes, we are entering into discussions with Precise Parking to look at a maintenance agreement with it. It has taken some time, uh, but we are continuing to move forward with that. I don't know if Mr. Cozy has anything to add. Nope. 
Thank you. So the wayfinding study is to look at all the signage in the downtown. I think that would include the private as well as the public signage. I think the issue that the, I know uh, Ms. Plumen has brought up several times, as well as other residents or other businesses downtown, is the, um, I mean, we have parking signs along the street, but they're very difficult to see. Is there some way we can treat signage downtown that simplify, simplifies the, cl the clutter um, and makes the signage easier to understand um, using d uh, several different tactics? Uh, in part, we have staff through our Councillor, I think you can now use your mic. No, no, no. I just wanted to let you know. I think your mic is on if you're going back and forth. In part, we have staff that can help deal with that, but we'll be looking at some uh, supplement to that through consultants who would have advice on wayfinding. There's a science to wayfinding that we'd be looking to uh, um, get from the consultants. Okay, I think that's all of our questions. Any others? Thank you very much for your information. We Thank will you, share uh, the, a hard copy of this presentation with the rest of the committee and council. Do you have any speaking notes that you want to share with us with, as well? I can provide this as the same as the presentation, if that's helpful. But the speaking notes, no. Sorry, no. Speaking notes, no. I have a no. copy of the exact presentation, if that's okay, helpful. Okay, well, we do have the electronic copy of the, the presentation, so that's great. great. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. your time this evening. Thank you. Uh, Fred Stanton. I don't see a Fred stand. Okay. Then uh, any others from the floor who wish to speak? Okay. Uh, going once, going twice. Sold. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for your delegations this evening and the information. The committee will uh, give consideration to all the comments, uh, and next week we will be discussing the matter further before giving direction to our staff. Uh, the capital budget will then come back to the committee uh, and to council eventually into December for final approval. Uh, members of committee, any other questions or comments that you wish to raise with our staff at this time before next week? Very good. Then uh, we're adjourned and oh, we'll... Move that motion first. Oh, okay. Sorry, I need a motion to uh, receive the delegation's information. Moved by Mayor Burton. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you very much. Uh, then that's it and we're adjourned. We'll see you next time.